So future me here, I recorded this back on Tuesday, so it's been a little bit since I, you know, did all this, but I found, I noticed new ideas as I was doing the reaction video, and so I wrote them all down. So what I'm gonna do here is that this is the review part of the reaction to chapter 168 of Rent-A-Girlfriend, and so I'm gonna show you guys the past me, and then I'm occasionally gonna interrupt where I'll just like pause the screen and be like, okay, so this is what I meant here, this is blah blah blah, this is blah blah blah. And then I also have other ideas that I will be Discussing so I'll like flash back to me now and I'll be like hey, so these are the other ideas. I've noticed so yeah uh, So for now, I'm just gonna show you guys past me and then eventually I'll come back here and I'll be like Okay, so this is my ideas and then I'll just end the video there and then so yeah Hope you guys enjoy and uh, there's a there's a lot to talk about I, I noticed a lot of things here and I did a lot of analytical thinking also I'm I, I kind of like wrote a mini script because I had like a lot of things to talk about so I'll occasionally like look away or I'll be looking at the screen, I won't be looking at you, so sorry about that in advance. But damn, I wrote these ideas really, really well, so I, I, I kind of want to say them the way I wrote them. Alright guys, thank you, and um, hope you enjoy the show. Damn. Oof. Wow, I, I'm i surprised to be honest, because this series is like really tackling these ideas very quickly. Like, I thought they were gonna take their time a little more, but they immediately got into it, and I really like that. I like that the series is just like, no, like, this has been a serious issue for a long time, and now that Shizuru has, like, gotten over her problems, I think it's, it's time for Kazuya to really tackle his, being the status quo that he's maintained, whether it's his life, whether it's his, f his friends and shit, or whether it's just him and Shizuru. Something I find interesting is Kazuya is noticing the flaws within their lies, and he's pointing them out to the audience specifically. And I feel like what's gonna happen is everything he mentioned is gonna come back to bite us in some way, shape, or form. Because he's like, no, it's gonna be fine, it's probably not gonna happen. And that's and that's an optimistic take, but you don't know what people talk about. And so they could have easily talked about it and brought it up. Th these things like could be unfolding in the background and Kazuya doesn't even know. Everything that Kazuya mentioned, whether it's Curry talking to Yamori, or just Chizuru's friend dating one of his friends, all these things are piling up together, and Mami is gonna be like the final straw to take everything down. And it's so interesting that they're setting it up this way, because... That shit's scary, bro. Like, damn. And I'm, I'm curious, like how it'll play out with how these events are going, because right here, they're setting up for Kazuya and uh, Ruka to go on this thing and possibly talk stuff out. And then after that, like, Kazuya's gonna want to talk to Chizuru, and then you have to also consider, like, them interacting with their family. They also haven't gone and visited um, Kazuya's family in a long time, and so I feel like that's gonna come back as well, where Kazuya is gonna have to rent out Chizuru to go and visit his family, or Kazuya is gonna have to bring Chizuru along to school for some reason or another. All, all these factors... All these, all these factors have yet to come back into play, and so the, the, what this what this chapter is doing is it's kind of testing what you remember. So for example, um, Kasia mentions the party, and that goes back to the girlfriend and the booze, which was uh, it was around chapter 61 or something like that, and you see how Kasia's friends are interacting with Chizuru's friends. And it was very clear that that dude, the dude with the mohawk, had the hots for Chizuru's friend, and guess what happened? He ends up asking her out. And so all these things were set up from a while ago, and now they're all coming back piece by piece. And it's all lining up to essentially be this house of cards that's just gonna tumble down immediately. I feel like this new arc is gonna be a huge, huge test for Kazuya's character and like what goes, what happens from now on. Because if all of this stuff actually happens as I'm saying it, it'll be such a heavy thing upon Kazuya because it's like he already like deals with like self-loathing, depression, anxiety, self-esteem issues, self-doubt, all these all these things that he's been working to deal with this entire time are coming back piece by piece and it's like now he's gonna have to tackle all these issues at once. What he needs right now is he needs a support system being Yamori, Sumi, and possibly Chizuru and so if they all like work together Hopefully things will work out, and hopefully Kazuya won't break apart like he did in the very beginning of the series, where when he's confronted with a, situ with a situation like this, because he's, he's been confronted with a situation like this before, for example, when he sees Mami for the first time at the booth bar, like when they go to, when him and Chizuru are lying and they go to the booth bar, and Chizuru stands up for him, but he gives in, and he lets himself get beat up. 
So hopefully something like that won't happen where he'll stand up for himself and not let these things fall apart. But that's the thing that's gonna happen. I think shit's just gonna hit the fan. Everything's gonna fly all sorts of whack and everything's gonna fall apart. And so Kazi will have to like pick up the pieces and put everything back together slowly piece by piece or Maybe not. I don't know, but that's what it's setting up like. I actually think this is a really good way to go about telling the story. It's, it's just a lot of setup, a lot of things happening, and it could go a million different ways. I really love, love the, how the intro is done. It's like, we've been so detached from the school life, from the friends, from everyone that Kazuya knows, and now that it's finally coming back to that, it, it even Kazuya is like, I've been so far away, I've been so distant from all of this that it feels weird coming back to it. And it's done not only through Kazuya's words, but it's done through the portrayal of the people, like the one that one friend with the mohawk that finally got a girlfriend, and she happened to be Chizuru's friend. I Iyamori knowing Curry's son, Curry getting all crispy at the <laughs> at his vacation, and just like a bunch of things that all come together. It's also really strange that we haven't seen Chizuru at all this entire chapter, and I think it's just because like her arc is kind of finally over, and so now we're setting up for the future arc. I also like the slight mention towards Kibe and how he wasn't present this chapter. Uh, I, I'm, I'm curious what, what that means. I'm, I'm really curious what that means as to why Kibe wasn't present this chapter, because they just kind of abruptly cut off after the mommy thing, and we don't know what happened. So I just feel like it's gonna be like, the best way I'm gonna put it is Mommy's gonna be like this sneaking assassin and she's gonna come out of nowhere and just destroy everything. And I think what's going on right now is this scene with, with Ruka is a callback to when he almost confessed to Ruka when he wasn't sure about his feelings for Chizuru and how Mommy stopped him then. Except now, Kazi is more aware of his feelings. It's just a matter of deciding. What does he want? What does he want to do? Does he want to be with Ruka even though he clearly likes Chizuru? He's letting Ruka do this, but I think it's gonna come to a point where either Ruka says something, she pushes him too far, or Kazuya just straight up tells her right away, or after like spending some time with her, that he likes Chizuru and that this isn't fair to her. And it's been really kind of setting up for all that. There's like a lot of setup and build up. Also, I appreciate the Ruka and the maid outfit. I'm not a huge Ruka, Ruka fan, but Ruka with maid outfit? Also that boss, oh my God, that man's on the oh. prowl. He like, he like calls you have it. He's like, no, you, you took an advance from me, son. I'm gonna have you clean everything. I don't give a shit that you two are like a thing. Pfft, go clean, boy. Kazuya, Kazuya like walked in and the manager was like, boy. Also, the beginning is a little, the beginning, as much as as awkward as it was, was an interesting callback to the beginning and how it's like Kazuya remembering that he's essentially kind of alone, even though he's really not. And he he wants to like build on that relationship and him doing what he did in the beginning of the chapter also shows how like he doesn't have this relationship with Ruka and he never really wanted this kind of relationship with Ruka, not only because she's underage, but also because he doesn't like her. So, slight clarification here, when I say he didn't want a relationship with Ruka and he's never liked her before, I don't mean like he's never, never liked her before, because he did almost want to confess and stuff, and at some point, he, if he had met Ruka under different circumstances, he would have liked her, sure. I'm just saying right now, currently, Kazuya is more interested in Chizuru, and uh, he, he wants a relationship with her because he's closer to her. She's done a lot more for him, she's a lot closer to him, while Ruka is more so just this really nice girl that he knows. He, he, he like respects and likes to be around and enjoys her company, but he doesn't view her with a romantic interest in the same way that he does Chizuru. What the manga is doing right now is it's taking the idea and addressing it specifically to Kazuya. It's like showing him the question. It's like, okay, so do you like her? Do you not like her? What is it? Like, are we, are we going the harem route with this? What's happening, bro? And it's just a matter of him deciding. Okay, um, uh, back to past me. And it sucks for Ruka, and it's kind of cute that they're gonna go on this date together. And damn, she looks really cute in that maid outfit. Wow, the more I look at it, the more I appreciate it. Holy shit. But yeah, it sounds like they're gonna go on this date, and uh, after that, things are either gonna, like, fall back into friend zone with Ruka, or something's gonna happen at the hot springs. And then after the hot springs, they're gonna come back, and... He, he might, hopefully, hopefully, um, I don't know, but something's gonna happen between him and Chizuru, whether it's him trying to confess, whether it's him trying to get with her, and before that even happens, I am betting that Mommy's gonna sneak in like an assassin and try to just kind of destroy everything.
and that's just kind of the idea I kind of have in my head in terms of like where the series can go from here. Also, the sex jokes in this chapter. Wow! Wow! There was like five, four pages just dedicated to that. It was very raw. It was very in your face. I'm like, Jesus Christ, all right. Like even, even his friend, even his friend joking about sex. I'm like, oh Christ, like poor bastard, poor bastard. That's kind of like all my thoughts for this chapter. Um, nothing too much to analyze here. I, okay, well, clearly there was a lot to analyze considering I've just been talking for the past, what? L let me, let me check that real quick. I've been talking for the last five or 10 minutes. So yeah, there was a decent amount to analyze. It, this chapter, I don't know why, I just thought of it right now. This chapter kind of reminds me of a time skip where if you just take into if you just take out everything that you've experienced up until this point, all these other characters have essentially gone through a time skip. Except for maybe like Kibe, who we've been seeing a little bit but not as much. And so everyone's gone through this time skip and so everything is kind of different now. This is what this chapter kind of did. It just kind of gave you that feeling of a time skip just happened and you're like, what happened? Who's who's done what? Who's done what? I want to I want to know what's going on. And even Curry like addresses the fact that to Kazuya, it's like, yo, you got to like deal with the status quo that you're kind of in. So guess who's back? Yeah, it's future me. Anyways, um, so the whole status quo thing, I keep bringing it up because it's paradoxical in nature. Kazuya has made a lot of progress, it's just in terms of wanting a relationship, a romantic one at the very least, he's able to handle one now, he's at that level I believe, and it's just him needing to decide that, hey, I gotta do this, I gotta just get out of my way, be a little, be a little scared and try again. And he wants to have that kind of romantic relationship because it's kind of like that time, like he's in college, everyone else is doing it and it's like he has someone he would want to have it with and he just kind of wants to try and so that's what i mean by status quo again he's progressed as a person he's done a lot of changes and he's a lot more mature and he's actually developed a very close connection to a lot of people whether it's the film crew sumi yamori ruka and, and jizuru of course and so it's just more so like hey if you want this relationship go for it and he's actually like made a lot of decent strides it's just he doesn't quite see it as well it's kind of like tunnel vision because like you see one bad and then you kind of like see all these other bads and it kind of all like stacks up and so Kazuya sees that as a status quo and to a degree yes he's correct it is a status quo because they are technically still in a fake relationship technically even though it's clearly far beyond this point but yeah okay back to the main video and you gotta you gotta make some changes bro because otherwise you're just kind of stuck here and you haven't really made any progress also i love how co open curry and yamori are with each other and i'm like what was what was yamori showing that boy what was yamori showing that boy on that phone oh my god i have a feeling yamori might actually start dating curry which would be hilariously perfect hilariously perfect i would love that also it would be interesting uh, Kazuya and Ruka do end up breaking up and he never has to tell Curry or he might discuss this idea with her where he, he'll like bring it up and then they'll have like a whole conversation about because he's tried to bring it up before and she's pushed him away except in that context it was a little different it was more so I feel bad for him I want to cheer him up but this is a slightly different context in where like he's my friend he might still like you and then he'll like I could see Kazuya like after breaking up with Ruka going to apologize to Curry and Curry would be like bro I'm like way over it where have you been like it's okay like I understand what was going on whatever and he'll just get over it and move on that would be so Oh, sick. But yeah, this chapter was really fun. It was really interesting. They hadn't shown mommy at all. The time, the way they do this thing where they just don't show her in the next chapter feels so, so ominous. Like I love how ominous it is. And I love the little tiny reference to the event that we saw last chapter where it's like Hibe is skipping on day one. And it's like, why is he skipping on day one? That's very, it's very weird. And, and sure, it's like, it helps with Kazuya realizing that his friends are kind of deadbeats. Which they kind of are, which they kind of are. It's really funny, which they kind of are. But yeah, no, um, so this chapter, lots of setup, lots of stuff going on. It was very interesting, it was very fun. It, it, again, it feels like a time skip ep a chapter. And I really like that feeling because it's like it, it it's dark. It feels almost dark. And and even it's even in the title. It's even in the title. Uh, Rent a girlfriend, uh, chapter one hundred sixty eight. The boyfriend and the ordinary life. And I was just like, whoa, the ordinary life. 
that's just yeah it's just something about that is just really dark and i think it, it comes to the it comes back to the idea of like how people always live ordinary lives and we try to escape our ordinary lives by watching anime and manga and seeing stuff like this and this is almost like a call to the viewer in a sense where it's like see he has an ordinary life too he's not all that different from us even though he ends up in all these crazy melodramatic situations that we find him in okay so now time for future me to actually talk a little bit so let's see here. The, I, I wrote a few things here. Um, one of the things I really liked is I like how the intro is a callback to how even people who live crazy, interesting lives like Kazuya still have days where they're not producery. They and, and this chapter really captures that ordinary life feeling for everyone. And I think that's why it's so weird to like read through this chapter because it's very... It feels simple, mundane, almost dry even, outside of the like conversations that Kazuya gets into or interacts with people. It, Kazuya gets up, does his daily exercise, goes to school, and then, you know, just meets some friends and then goes to work. It's very simple, it's very straightforward, and, and again, it's an ordinary life. That's why it, it's so weird to read that, because up until this point, the series has not been ordinary. It's been otherworldly, melodramatic, and, and even though these events are somewhat realistic, it's also a bit crazy and out there and I think what this chapter does is even though Kazuya goes through all these interesting events surrounding him he's still human and I think that's what this chapter kind of tried to do and I think it actually did that because because I was feeling a strange way while reading it and I couldn't quite put it down to words until like I sat down and just wrote it Ironically, I know because I'm just better at writing my feelings down than actually saying them I, I kind of struggle with that dumb shit. I don't know. Leave me alone. I wrote it down. And here we are I also like the little nod to Kazuya's awareness of the people around him and how he knows where each pieces of the puzzle fall in terms of the Relationships like how Chizuru's friend knows who Chizuru is in person, but doesn't really know her secret But his friend knows that he's dating a girl named Chizuru who happens to look just a little bit like her He just doesn't notice as well as Kuri knowing he, he has a rental relationship with Chizuru, but he doesn't know about Ruka. He doesn't know how far things have gotten. And it sounds like he wants to tell him, but Yomori knows more. And now Yomori's a friend of his, and that's kind of weird because it's like, okay, how much do they share? How much do we really know? What, what does this all mean in the end of the line? And that's confusing to someone like Kazuya, and that's why he like gets it all muddled up. And he's like, like what does this all mean in terms of like how the relationships are going to play out or all these secrets? It's highlighting how this stuff is becoming too much for Kazuya to keep track of and highlighting the idea that Kazuya doesn't really need these lies. They're just needlessly complicating a situation that doesn't really need to be this complicated. Like, he's just, she should just be dating Chizuru. Like, in the end of the line, this is his and Chizuru's business. It's none of anyone else's, but he made the mistake of dragging everyone into it and so now they're going to judge him for it and so it's it's weird for Kazuya because it's just a matter of how will he handle this when he's being confronted with the fact that he's going to be judged for lying and tricking his friends and doing all these things even though like Chizuru has perpetuated the lie too it's like she's gonna get some flack for it too and it's like it's just how he's gonna deal with it and how the things surrounding that are gonna play out and of course the biggest foreshadowing online being things end things change one way or another, which immediately transitions to Ruka, hinting that events are probably going to transpire with Ruka, and lo and behold, they're going to the hot springs. See what I'm doing here? Which is why I'm saying these events will play out the way I think they will, because of how the story is directing our attention with the paneling and presentation. I also like how Ruka is paying attention to the events with Chizuru and Kazuya, just to find an opening to get back in the fire. The moment she asked him if he cheered her up and he said yeah, she leaped in like a goddamn panther. Like this girl was stalking her prey, waiting patiently for the little opening to strike. But despite that, we get to see that she's been a little stressed out too, and that the events with Chizuru had an impact on her as well. Just a little reminder that she is human and she doesn't outright hate Chizuru, but just use her as a rival of sorts rather than an enemy. Kazi even notices this and tells us how she's a nice girl for the umptillion time. Which brings me to my next point. I find it interesting how Kazuya immediately picks up with the idea of a trip and just asks her where they're going instead of thinking about it too much, showcasing the more decisive qualities that he's developed from all the experiences he's had thus far. He even catches on that they're staying overnight because, yeah, I mean, he did this with Chizuru twice now, so we are gonna get some of that action too, you know? Which leads me to my final point, the title of the next chapter. 
a woman's heart. I think the next chapter will be Kazuya understanding Ruka's feelings and how a female friend can feel for someone they're attracted to, since he's not exactly experienced in that department, but also possibly finding out about her heart condition, as that is something that has eluded him on several different occasions even though we've seen clues of him noticing that to be the case. For example, their first interaction at the school before she really confesses to him where they kind of hiding from Curry and she pulls out the phone and she starts doing the heart stuff and he kind of like looks at it but he doesn't really see. And then again when they go to the pool after Kazuya and Chizuru come back from that trip and he's walking back and he casually sees her on her phone and he, he sees something weird there, but he doesn't outright ask her. So I feel like Kazuya like has a clue, but we don't outright know if he knows. Which, of course, is a way to string you along so you get interested and be like, oh, does he really know? Does he not really know? And it's kind of like a hint to the audience. It's like, hey, do you remember? Call coming back to that idea of, hey, do you remember of all this stuff that has been showing you up until this point? That could be the change that they're hinting at when we see those lines before transitions to Ruka. Instead of an outright breakup, just Kazuya really sitting down and understanding who Ruka is as a person Person, since he doesn't really know her all that much outside of her personality and maybe her school life. You know what I mean? Like a similar level to how he understands Chizuru since they're like really really close and he's not only he not only understands her character from a fundamental level, but he also knows why she acts and why she does the things that she does. And I think once he understands Ruka better, kind of akin to the interaction he had with her in The Girlfriend in the Night, and just like that interaction, despite going through a sex crazed crisis, he was able to make a proper decision. And so I think what this is hinting at is it'll probably come back to a similar idea in the next chapter where Kazuya will understand how this things came to be with Ruka and why it's so weird between him and her. And then he'll be able to make a proper decision on their relationship and maybe either tell her how he feels or maybe just kind of try to guide her towards a proper direction instead of having her follow him everywhere where he doesn't he doesn't really feel the same way and end up hurting her even more in the future which could also be set up for him trying to deal with the lies as he's perpetuated the lies for a very long time and so if he doesn't rip the band-aid off soon like curry told him it'll only hurt more in the future and so everything is essentially connected. This is like a goddamn Kingdom Hearts plot. It's just all connected piece by piece. And, and in the end, it's all going to come back together. And you're going to be like, wow, shit, everything is tied together. What's going on? Yada, yada, yada. So, all right, that's all my thoughts for today. Thank you for watching. And um, I'll let old me do the outro this time. Because, you know, he recorded it. So why the heck not? Thank you guys for watching. And um, time travel. <laughs> so, yeah, if you've enjoyed this content... Uh, subscribe to my channel if you really like this content like hit the like button and of course if you want to keep up with my uploads hit the bell icon and stuff so for now i've been fate and i hope you've enjoyed my content today and i will see you guys in chapter 169 <laughs> all right see you guys later and thank you take care